Now a retelling of the Plunderer anime. Subscribe to the channel. It is very important for the development of the channel. In a grim future, humanity's worth is reduced to numerical imprints on their bodies. These digits, once they reach zero, condemn them to a dark abyss. Ina's life takes a harrowing turn when she witnesses her mother's descent into this abyss, but not before her mother entrusts her with a glass orb containing 10,000 units and imparts a cryptic mission, find the legendary ace marked by a white star. For five relentless years, Hina embarks on a quest to fulfill her mother's enigmatic request. One fateful day, she crosses paths with Licht, a peculiar figure concealed behind a mask, whose irreverent behavior belies a deeper purpose. Accompanying him is Nana, who unravels the stark truth governing their world, unwavering obedience to anyone bearing a higher numerical imprint. Hina shares her own number, 441, testament to her staggering journey spanning 44,100 kilometers. The plot thickens as they encounter a sergeant major adorned with a star-shaped mark on his face, who declares himself the ace. He attempts to exploit Hina until she unveils the 10,000-unit orb, recognized as a ballot, and seeks to claim it. Hina, holding a superior number, commands him to halt. However, he tricks her into a perilous challenge known as a star stake, a duel of high stakes where their numerical values are wagered. Following a brutal confrontation, he takes away 440 units from her, leaving her with a meager one. Revelations follow as the sergeant admits he isn't the true ace, given that the legend of the ace dates back three centuries, suggesting the ace's demise. Suddenly, Licht materializes and places his own number on the line, a shocking negative 999. As their duel unfolds, the sergeant realizes that such a number is inconceivable unless Licht is a ballot holder, harnessing a numbered ballot to artificially restore his value above zero. Licht finally unveils his true identity as Licht Bach, the authentic legendary ace, marked by the white star and wielding a formidable sword bearing the number 5700, signifying his countless victories in battle. He solemnly pledges to recover the 440 units taken from Hina, promising justice and restitution. A centuries ago, a cataclysmic conflict known as the Waste War engulfed the world. During this tumultuous time, a cadre of exceptional warriors, hailed as aces, emerged, demonstrating astonishing feats of superhuman prowess. Strangely, these aces vanished into obscurity once the war had subsided. Among them, Lick showcased his extraordinary abilities, dispatching soldiers with effortless ease through his remarkable speed, each step resonating with the power to fracture the very earth beneath him. Nana elucidated the origins of Lick's sobriquet, the ace of flashing strikes, rooted in his incredible velocity. While his numerical mark of 5700 signified the tally of his defeated foes, the stark contrast of his negative 999 marked the count of women who had spurned his advances. In a decisive confrontation, Licht effortlessly triumphed over the sergeant, reducing his number to a mere one. As an unexpected act of generosity, he returned not only the pilfered 440 units to Hina but also bestowed upon her the remainder of his numerical worth, elevating her count to 760. However, the mood swiftly soured as Licht surreptitiously spirited away Hina's cherished 10,000 ballot, replacing it with a seemingly innocuous stuffed doll. Ina was devastated by the loss of this treasured memento from her mother. Later, Nana unveiled Lick's ruse, disclosing that he had concealed the ballot within the doll and had merely pretended to steal it in the presence of witnesses. Ballots were contraband, and this strategic subterfuge ensured that the soldier's pursuit would solely target Licht, sparing Hina from harm. Tearfully, Hina implored Licht to reconsider his departure, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. In a fit of despair, she exclaimed her resentment, thereby altering Lick's negative 999 to a harsher negative 1000. In an unforeseen twist, Hina encountered one of the soldiers, who unveiled his true identity as a spy. He expressed gratitude for her unwitting assistance and promptly conveyed to his covert superiors that they had at last pinpointed Lick's whereabouts. The military paid little heed to Hina, instead intensifying their search for Licht, convinced that he possessed the coveted ballot. In a tranquil village, Master Sergeant Lin Mei, along with her subordinate, Sergeant Pele Paporo, held their station. Lin dedicated her time to volunteer work, and her numerical count steadily rose in accordance with the number of desperate individuals she aided. Acting on a description of Licht, Lin apprehended a nearby masked individual, an uncanny coincidence as it turned out to be Licht himself. Clinging to his mask, Licht divulged his negative 1000 count, lamenting the rejections he had endured from women. Unfortunately, Lin, following misguided counsel from Pele, attempted to uplift Lick's spirits with a compassion-driven outing, 
unintentionally discovering that Lick's inherently improper behavior paradoxically raised her own count. This peculiar twist was attributed to Lick's peculiar and persistently perverse antics, which curiously helped to alleviate his own despair. Suddenly, Pele pointed out the significance of Lick's negative 1000 count, a telltale sign of a ballot holder. This revelation dawned on Lin, leading her to unveil Lick's identity by removing his mask. In an unforeseen turn, Lick absconded with her sword, only to realize that Lin was a skilled martial artist herself. Their brief skirmish was punctuated by Lick's flirtatious advances, which flustered Lin to the point where he managed to slip away when she closed her eyes, half expecting a kiss. This outcome greatly vexed her. Meanwhile, a lieutenant by the name of Jail Murdoch interrogated Nana relentlessly, seeking to extract information about Lick's whereabouts. Frustrated by Nana's evasive responses, Jail resorted to destructive measures, demolishing her food wagon. Undeterred, he set out on a determined pursuit to track down Lick. Following Lick's nimble escape, Lin persistently dedicated herself to her volunteer work, though a cloud of despondency hung over her due to the missed opportunity for promotion. Unexpectedly, Lick resurfaced, prompting Lin to pursue him through the village. Along the way, a series of comical misunderstandings arose, leaving the villagers under the impression that she and Licht were embroiled in a lover's quarrel. This inadvertent confusion provided Licht with the perfect escape route, especially when Lin voiced her grievances about her uniform repeatedly exposing her underwear. Meanwhile, Hina recognized the urgency of warning Licht about Lieutenant Murdoch's pursuit. However, they were compelled to first assist in rebuilding Nana's wagon. Licht couldn't help but ponder the villagers' curious preference for a peaceful existence over aiding in the apprehension of criminals. Lin's attempts to pursue Licht were continuously thwarted by the villagers' myriad troubles. Nevertheless, this unexpected camaraderie fostered admiration in Licht for Lin, leading him to reveal himself once more, allowing Lin to savor the thrill of the chase. In a dramatic turn of events, Licht gallantly intervened to protect Lin when Murdoch and his soldiers launched a sudden assault. During this encounter, Murdoch's numerical mark was unveiled as 900, accompanied by a ballot that endowed him with the ability to forge iron weapons, earning him the moniker, Iron Jail. To Licht's astonishment, he found himself overpowered by Murdoch, who disclosed his clandestine agenda of concealing his true numerical value from superiors, dreading an impending promotion that would relegate him to a desk job within the confines of an office. Murdoch's authentic count stood at a staggering 12,500, more than double Lick's own. Murdoch achieved the improbable feat of wresting Lick's sword from him but chose to return it. In a revealing moment, he unveiled the significance of his numerical count, which symbolized his unwavering convictions. Murdoch's iron weapons drew strength from these convictions, rendering them indestructible, never having been bested. With Licht ensnared, he coerced Licht's surrender. Murdoch leveled a grave accusation against Licht, surmising that Licht had once been a soldier based on his combat style. When Licht adamantly refused to respond, Murdoch resolved to resort to torture. However, Lin courageously stepped in to protect Licht, sustaining injuries in the process. Murdoch, harboring disdain for Lin's leniency towards criminals over her charitable work, chastised her relentlessly. Lin was on the verge of apologizing until Licht intervened, preventing her from capitulating. In a surprising twist, Licht managed to break free from his restraints, revealing that he had always possessed the capability to overcome Murdoch's iron. As Licht and Murdoch unleashed their full potential, Licht demanded an apology from Murdoch for unjustly assuming that Lin was indolent when, in truth, she worked harder than anyone. Their intense confrontation led to the collapse of a cliff, sending Lin plummeting toward a perilous descent. In a moment of repentance, Murdoch attempted to rescue her, but Licht managed to reach her first. A tactless comment about her weight, however, triggered Lin's ire, causing Lick's count to diminish to a negative 1001. He then entrusted her to Murdoch, who allowed him to escape. Recognizing the wisdom in Lick's words, Murdoch set about creating a play area for the village's children using his iron abilities, marking a departure from his relentless pursuit of Licht. He decided to grant Licht a three-day head start before resuming the search, with Lin agreeing to accompany him. In a poignant moment, as he reluctantly repaired a child's broken doll, Murdoch's formidable count decreased by one, from 12,500 to 12,499, as he relinquished a portion of his convictions in favor of a more compassionate path. Licht found himself cornered after his clash with Iron Jail Murdoch when he learned that all the escape routes had been sealed off. Ina and Nana came to his rescue, revealing the grim situation. However, Hina couldn't help but harbor a tinge of jealousy, having witnessed Lick's valiant efforts to save another woman. She scolded him for seemingly abandoning her. In a twist of fate, Lick was compelled to intervene in a harrowing incident involving a girl named Pelmo, 
teetering on the brink of a fatal fall from an experimental aircraft. Helmo implored Licht and Hina to aid her in realizing her dream of achieving flight, despite the severe consequences associated with researching flight, which were punishable by death. Licht undertook the task of modifying her latest aircraft design, though he couldn't shake the nagging worry that he had inadvertently placed her in peril. Nonetheless, Hina commended his efforts and sought to learn more about his own aspirations. Lick, however, remained tight-lipped about his own dreams, opting instead to jest about wanting to catch a glimpse of Hina's panties, much to her chagrin. Helmo interjected, announcing the completion of the new aircraft. Their moment of relief was short-lived as soldiers descended upon them. Licht was left with no choice but to destroy the aircraft. Ingeniously, they convinced the soldiers that the damaged wings were merely windmill sails. A sudden abyss materialized, and Pelmo made a heart-wrenching revelation, her count was intrinsically linked to her dreams coming true, dwindling each time her aircraft failed to take flight. Now, her count had plummeted to zero. Hina attempted to rescue her, but the abyss fiercely fought back. In a desperate bid to save Hina, Licht intervened, but when the abyss collided with his sword, he was gripped by a violent flashback. Helmo, remarkably serene, willingly embraced the abyss, convinced that it wasn't death but rather the gateway to another world. She promised to reunite with them someday. Licht teetered on the brink of unconsciousness, his left eye inundated with a cascade of numbers, leaving everyone pondering the ominous turn of events. Contemplating his departure, Licht found himself at a crossroads but was swayed by an unexpected plea from Hina. She spoke in her sleep, unknowingly asking him to stay, and that small act was enough to keep him rooted. Shortly thereafter, Lin managed to catch up with Licht, expressing her gratitude for his earlier act of heroism in saving her life. However, her gratitude swiftly transformed into an attempt to arrest him. With Lin and Hina meeting for the first time, they exchanged stories about how they knew Licht, both growing increasingly upset with him. Nana, always the master of orchestrating peculiar events, arranged a cooking competition between Lin and Hina to attract customers. With the grand prize being none other than Licht himself, Lin embarked on a shopping spree for vegetables, while Hina showcased her exceptional skill in hunting and trapping wild beasts, demonstrating her ability to confront and conquer even the most dangerous creatures. In a culinary showdown, Lin concocted a delightful vegetable stew, while Hina's meat stew exuded a distinctly ominous aura. Licht savored both dishes, but it became evident to everyone that Hina's offering was the superior one. The crowd clamored for Licht to declare a winner, placing him in a precarious situation. However, before he could make a decision, Murdoch arrived and berated Lin for her apparent distraction. Licht seized the opportunity to evade the impending responsibility by threatening to run away, strategically shifting the blame onto Murdoch rather than Pelmo Poporo and Lin. A brief altercation between Licht and Murdoch ensued, but Nana intervened, chastising them for their childish behavior and the damage they had inflicted upon the town square. Surprisingly, even Murdoch was subdued by her forceful personality, complying with her commands and even joining in the festivities. The following morning, Murdoch, Lin, and Pelmo awoke with hangovers, realizing that Nana, Lick, and Hina had managed to slip away during the night. As they embarked on a pursuit, they stumbled upon an injured soldier from another town, bearing grim tidings of complete destruction that had befallen their community. Murdoch's grim exploration yielded no survivors within the decimated town. The serene lake that once graced the town had vanished, replaced by a colossal abyss. An injured soldier emerged, bearing a chilling account of a fire-breathing demon's emergence from the abyss. Murdoch, resolute in his convictions, asserted that this could only be the work of a ballot holder wielding fire-based abilities. In the company of the injured soldier, Lin and Pele embarked on a journey to the neighboring town for medical treatment. It was there that they unexpectedly crossed paths with Lick, Hina, and Nana. Murdoch confronted Licht, firmly convinced that he held vital information. Nana, in a fit of anger, prohibited them from engaging in a physical brawl, prompting an alternative contest of a different nature, a drinking contest. As the drinks flowed, the atmosphere grew increasingly inebriated. Murdoch, fueled by intoxication, accused Licht of being the elusive legendary ace and demanded an explanation for the military's relentless pursuit. Licht, in a bid to exacerbate Murdoch's inebriation, cunningly encouraged him to imbibe even more, while Nana decided to partake in the merriment as well. Lin, on the other hand, found herself tipsy after just one glass and posed a candid question to Hina about her relationship with Licht. In the midst of revelry, both Licht and Murdoch eventually succumbed to the effects of alcohol. Surprisingly, Lin and Hina each offered their laps as makeshift pillows for Licht. Suddenly, the lake abyss reappeared with a vengeance, unleashing devastation upon the town. A peculiar, otherworldly noise emanated from the abyss. As Licht recognized the sound, 
he claimed it to be impossible, as all such demons had supposedly been vanquished during the Waste War. Licht and Murdoch bore witness to the Abyss's revelation, an unexpected, modern helicopter armed with machine guns and missiles, an enigma that defied the boundaries of their understanding. As the helicopter launched its attack, Licht urgently instructed everyone to take cover. However, Murdoch resisted Licht's leadership, bewildered by the notion that a supposed criminal could hold the rank of colonel. The tension was palpable until Licht disclosed his true military rank, colonel, and boldly drew the helicopter's attention. A wave of elation swept over the onlookers as Licht engaged in a valiant assault against the helicopter. But the sinister abyss intervened, thwarting his efforts. Lin, in a moment of revelation, unveiled the military's designation for the abyss's arms. Alting. Alting made a gripping attempt to ensnare the helicopter, even as Licht persisted in his onslaught. Yet, each strike against Alting resulted in a shocking counterattack, rendering Licht helpless. Desperate, Hina implored Murdoch to join the fray, but he staunchly refused. Attacking Alting was a crime punishable by execution, and he would not permit anyone to violate the law. However, an intriguing turn of events occurred when Murdoch accidentally misplaced his glasses. Deprived of the ability to witness the breach of any laws, he impulsively launched an attack against Alting, an act that coincidentally left all the soldiers blind. In a peculiar twist, the blinded soldiers unintentionally created a makeshift ladder, enabling Licht to reach the helicopter. Yet, as he gazed into the cockpit, Licht was met with a shocking revelation. Before he could react, the helicopter was abruptly shot down by the manically deranged ace of pursuit, Sanahara Mizuka, bearing a formidable count of 32,000. She shot Murdoch and unleashed a murderous rampage, revealing her twisted obsession with following the last order Licht had issued during the Waste War, kill everybody. In the ensuing chaos, Sanahara divulged Licht's true name, Rihito, and demanded that he revert to his former bloodthirsty persona and end her life, or she would claim the life of an innocent child nearby. Fueled by desperation and fury, Licht unleashed a relentless assault on her men, their bodies vanishing in the wake of his fury. Finally, in the aftermath of the chaos, Licht answered the questions that had lingered in Hina and Murdoch's minds. He declared himself as the plunderer, harboring a grand ambition to claim everything within the country for himself. In the midst of a high-stake star stake, Licht found himself confronted by Sanahara, and she unleashed a barrage of gunfire, striking him multiple times in the chest. An intense, crimson power surged forth from Licht, causing his sword's count to skyrocket to 57,000. He moved with such incomprehensible speed that Sanahara struggled to even perceive his movements. Nana however, unveiled a disturbing revelation, Licht had been possessed by an ominous alter ego known as Schmelman, who now exerted control. Schmelman overpowered Sanahara, reducing her count to 16,000. Nana began to suspect that Sanahara had also fallen under the sway of an evil personality. Drawing from her knowledge of Lick's past, Nana divulged a startling revelation. Sanahara, one of the aces, had been the most compassionate among them, never having taken a life. However, it appeared that someone had manipulated her, possibly through drugging, into fighting Lick, with the sinister intent of awakening Schmelman. Desperation gripped Hina as she clung to Lick, but Schmelman's malevolence nearly led to her demise. It was Sanahara who intervened, rescuing Hina from imminent danger. As Schmelman readied himself to eliminate Sanahara, she experienced a poignant flashback to their shared past in modern Japan, during their high school days. Schmelman's sinister intentions were abruptly thwarted by Murdoch, despite suffering from a bullet wound to the chest. Valiantly confronted him in a fierce duel. As the battle raged on, Schmelman began shedding tears and confessed that he killed enemies to spare his friends from the burden. In a moment of solemn resolve, Murdoch chose to honor Schmelman's plea, fighting with all his might and ultimately summoning an iron warrior that rendered Schmelman unconscious, allowing Licht to resurface. The ordeal left Murdoch incapacitated from his injury. Meanwhile, elsewhere, a general shared a darker, alternate version of the tortoise and the hare with a group of children. One of his soldiers, however, revealed a startling revelation. He bore the name General Schmelman Bach, hinting at a deeper, enigmatic connection to the unfolding events. With Lick's recovery, the star stake between him and Sanahara remained unfinished. As a result, Alting was unable to depart and resorted to tormenting the girls, with the notable exception of Hina. Meanwhile, Murdoch received a summons from Supreme Commander Alexandrov Gregorovic, his adoptive father who, despite his childish demeanor, had a deep affection for Murdoch. 
Inquisitive and determined, Murdoch pressed Gregorovic for information about Sanahara soldiers dressed in black uniforms. Gregorovic disclosed that they constituted the Special Services Unit, or SSU, which served the royal family in clandestine roles, including espionage, abduction, and assassination. Regarding Lick's enigmatic past, Gregorovic unveiled a startling revelation. The aces had been surgically altered into human weapons for the Waste Wars, with Licht emerging as the most formidable member of the most elite squad. A peculiar side effect of the surgical procedures had arrested the aging process, explaining why Licht remained eternally youthful. Gregorovica's demeanor suddenly shifted as he revealed that he was aware of Murdoch's declining numerical count, which had dropped to 12,499, and pressed him for information about Lick's whereabouts. Murdoch, however, resorted to falsehoods, prompting a further decrease in his count to 12,498. Gregorovic astutely disclosed his knowledge of Murdoch's recent attack on Altain. Murdoch returned to his mission to apprehend Licht, who reluctantly surrendered. In the proximity, a concealed spy divulged their true intentions, to have Licht continue his plundering activities. Suspecting blackmail or coercion, Licht posed a series of probing questions to Murdoch, who continued to deceive him, leading to a further decline in his count to 12,496. And the unfolding events took an unexpected turn as Nana, wielding an unexplained power, revealed her true identity as an ace. She transported Murdoch, Hina, Pele, and Lin to modern Japan, beseeching them to alter the past where she had failed. In this unfamiliar setting, they beheld the teenage versions of Sanahara and Licht, who was then known as Rihito during their high school years, their past shrouded in mystery. Following Rihito into the school, they unexpectedly found themselves confronted by a delinquent. It was at this moment that Murdoch realized his ballot had gone missing, leaving him unable to command iron. Captain Allen and Lieutenant Ferenda, both of whom had been tailing them, swiftly intervened, revealing a startling truth, Japan stood as the last remaining bastion after a devastating global conflict, and the seemingly ordinary school was, in fact, a military academy. Their introduction to the academy's enigmatic headmaster, Major Schmelman, was an unsettling one. Schmelman began with a peculiar rendition of The Tortoise and the Hare, only to take a far more chilling turn by ordering Allen to shoot three recruits who had dared to laugh during his storytelling. In a daring move, Rahito seized Schmelman, holding him hostage. In response, Schmelman offered to teach Rahito how to break his own neck a horrifying proposition that Rahito declined. Instead, he offered to sacrifice himself in Hina's place, defying Schmelman's ominous aura of death. Ferenda intervened, revealing that the recruits were unharmed, as Alan had utilized paint bullets to drive home a point about unwavering obedience. Schmelman, ever enigmatic, grew intrigued by Rahito's untapped potential. Meanwhile, Murdoch grappled with the paradoxical observation that Rahito appeared to be a young licked, bearing little resemblance to his future self. As Pele attempted to delve into the mysteries of Altain using a computer, they encountered an impenetrable blockade. Instead, Alan embarked on an explanation about Altain, an advanced, enigmatic technology of unknown origin that had fallen to Earth in the midst of the war. Altain possessed the power to compel humanity to obey its will through a collective vote, leading humanity to dismantle nuclear weaponry and ban all warfare. Yet, these actions had given rise to unforeseen and cataclysmic consequences, matters that Alan hesitated to divulge. Murdoch's growing suspicion hinted at Nana's true intent. It appeared that she not only sought their assistance in aiding Licht but also aimed to unravel the elusive origin of Alting and potentially rescue their future society from the enigmatic grip of this powerful entity. Schmelman, the enigmatic headmaster, made a pivotal decision to personally oversee the education of the newcomers. Meanwhile, Alan, ever the vigilant spy, discreetly eavesdropped on their conversations, learning of the abyss, ballots, and the enigmatic country of Alsia. In a surprising turn of events, Schmelman introduced a reward system involving stars for the students. He clarified that gathering 10 stars would grant immediate entry into the military, while those who lost their stars faced expulsion. Stars could be earned through tasks or pilfering from classmates. A sudden realization struck Murdoch and Hina, who grasped the origin of star stakes. They discerned that these academic trials mirrored the very foundation of their society's practice. Rihito found himself in an unusual predicament, as Schmelman assigned him no stars and instructed him to pilfer one or face expulsion. Licht, on the other hand, seemed indifferent, as his sole purpose at the academy was to persuade his adopted brother, Sakai Tokikes, to return home. Trouble stirred when Don, the academy's resident delinquent, 
began breaking into lockers and absconding with student stars, including Sakai's. In a bid to thwart Sakai's resistance, Doan even threatened Sakai's ailing grandmother, who lived under Doan's parents' landlordship. Sakai, however, refused to leave the academy, reasoning that the families of soldiers received larger food rations, which his grandmother desperately needed due to her ailing health caused by malnutrition. In a selfless act, Murdoch gave Sakai his last remaining star. He then confronted Doan just outside the academy's gate, issuing a stern warning that he would cripple Doan before he could even embark on his military career once he stepped off the academy's premises. Their confrontation was suddenly interrupted by Schmelman himself, who unveiled an unexpected twist, Mahito had pickpocketed Doan's stolen stars, leaving him with only two and rendering him ineligible for graduation. Recognizing Murdoch's loyalty to his classmates, Schmelman awarded him with two stars. Rihito, choosing to retain two stars, resolved to remain at the academy with a noble goal in mind, to convince Sakai to return home. He reasoned that as long as they stayed at the academy, they could channel their own food rations to their ailing grandmother, ensuring her well-being. The academy issued a directive to the class, commanding them to uncover the identity of the voyeur spying on individuals in the baths. In a comical twist, the girls embarked on a mission to apprehend Rahito, mistakenly believing him to be the culprit. This mix-up inadvertently led to an unexpected sight for Murdoch, who inadvertently glimpsed Lin in a state of undress. However, as the girls adopted a disciplined, soldier-like approach to dealing with the situation, their resolve intensified. Frustrated by their willingness to become ruthless killers, Rahito decided to abandon his spying efforts, disheartened by the transformation of his classmates. Schmelman offered an unconventional perspective, suggesting that they become soldiers that do not kill. His proposition involved becoming so overwhelmingly powerful that they could intimidate their adversaries into surrender. Murdoch's curiosity led him to follow Schmelman to a concealed facility, where he made a startling revelation. Their objective was to replicate the voting power of Alting, which, while eliminating nuclear weaponry, had failed to eradicate the threat of war. Other nations were already gearing up for a new conflict, and the Academy sought to harness all things capabilities to maintain an advantage. In the midst of this covert exploration, Murdoch encountered a young girl with time-traveling abilities, who unveiled herself as the very first ace. Known as the Ace of Knowing, she explained that certain individuals, like Schmelman, possessed the innate ability to genetically harmonize with Alting, granting them unique powers. However, normal humans, like Murdoch, could only achieve this harmonization through ballots. The ace surgery, she revealed, involved implanting Schmelman's DNA into ordinary children to impart his genetic abilities. Only Nana had survived this grueling procedure. Eventually, Rahito, Sanahara, and four others would undergo the same transformation, culminating in a total of seven aces. Bound by the constraints of her own timeline, the young Nana was unable to divulge more, but she entrusted Murdoch with a modern memory card from her future self, containing vital information about the reason she had sent them to this particular point in time. Making a heartfelt promise to reunite with Nana in 300 years, Murdoch prepared to make his escape. However, his efforts were abruptly thwarted when he was captured by Captain Allen, who promptly sentenced him to execution, casting a shadow of uncertainty over their fate. In a startling revelation, Murdoch came to the realization that Allen was, in fact, a younger version of Alexandrov Grigorovich, his future foster father. In response, Alan himself grasped the gravity of the situation, recognizing Nana's intent to alter the future. Acknowledging the significance of their mission, Alan chose to spare Murdoch's life. Taking them to a citizen's housing area, Alan revealed the stark reality of the situation, they were faced with an insurmountable challenge in providing sustenance for everyone. He earnestly implored them to refrain from hindering the military's efforts, a plea born out of concern for the welfare of the populace. With newfound knowledge of Rahito's eventual transformation into Licht, they grappled with a profound dilemma. Both their existence and the very future of their homeland, Alsia, hinged on Licht's success in the Waste War. Fueled by determination, Murdoch demanded hand-to-hand -hand combat training from Allen, resolute in his ambition to best him in the future and assume the mantle of supreme commander. Schmelman, meanwhile, initiated their training regimen focusing on medieval weaponry. He emphasized that the era of firearms would soon yield to obsolescence and the most formidable soldiers would be those adept in melee combat. In clandestine discussions, Schmelman divulged a chilling revelation, the impending war was designed to reduce the surplus human population to ensure the species' survival. Under this grim pretext, Schmelman initiated the students' training at the beach with a high-stakes game of capture the flag. Rihito's class emerged victorious, employing cunning tactics, 
outsmarting the delinquent Don. Unified by their newfound respect for Rihito's leadership, the class decided to appoint him as their commander. However, the situation took a darker turn when one of Schmelman's subordinates, David, perished on a mission. Before his demise, David managed to transmit a crucial message to Schmelman. Fearing that the ACE project was in jeopardy, Schmelman made the fateful decision to initiate human testing, with Rihito emerging as the strongest genetic candidate. After grasping the gravity of the situation and the potential consequences, Rihito reluctantly consented to undergo the surgery, marking a pivotal turning point in their journey. Faced with the profound consequences of Al Alcia's potential non-existence, Murdoch made a resolute decision to safeguard Rihito's surgery from any interference. Meanwhile, Doan, motivated by concern for Sanahara's well-being, resorted to stealing her last remaining star under the belief that expulsion would keep her safe from the impending war. Murdoch, however, delivered a stern lecture to Sanahara, encouraging her to forge her own path to strength. In a heartfelt gesture, he shared one of his stars with her. Amidst the turmoil, Lin courageously confessed her love for Licht, laying her feelings bare. Ina, on the other hand, made a decisive choice, to allow Rihito to assume the mantle of Licht while ensuring that he refrained from taking lives, thereby averting the development of his Schmelman persona. In this manner, they hoped Alcia could still come into existence following the conclusion of the war. Pele, grappling with his emotions for Lin, was on the brink of sharing his true feelings when an unforeseen crisis struck. A foreign nation launched an attack on the academy, a puzzling occurrence considering all things supposed ban on war. Chaos ensued as enemy soldiers descended upon the students, leaving a trail of bloodshed in their wake. In the midst of the onslaught, Don came to Sanahara's rescue, and Murdoch heroically saved most of their classmates. Ferenda, meanwhile, unraveled a troubling revelation, four of the seven ballots needed for an Alting vote were held in foreign nations. This implied that these nations had clandestinely voted to reinstate war, casting a grim shadow over the unfolding conflict. As tensions escalated, the enemy forces severed the electricity supply, endangering Rihito's life due to the incomplete surgery. The entire class banded together, engaging in a desperate struggle to reach the emergency generator. Many of them sustained injuries or met unfortunate fates along the way. In a fateful moment, Alan bore the brunt of a rocket's impact, resulting in the distinctive facial scar he would carry into the future. With Rihito's hair turning white as a dire consequence of his deteriorating condition, Hina found herself ensnared by an enemy soldier, her cry for Licht echoing through the chaos. Murdoch reactivates the electricity and Rihito survives. Schmelman gives Rihito his trademark sword, explaining it is a replica ballot that must be activated with an oath of his choosing measured by a number. Rihito defeats soldiers with super speed, earning his name ace of flashing strikes. The soldier's commander reveals they have a nuclear bomb and the switch is hidden in one of their bodies, meaning Rihito must kill or die. Left with no choice, Rihito beheads them. Before dying, the commander reveals he lied about the bomb and commends Rihito for saving his friends. Rihito breaks down over breaking his oath not to kill and Hina, Murda, Lin, and Pele begin to glow as they are pulled back to their own time. Rihito decides the only way to ensure his friends don't kill is to do all the killing himself and swears his ballot will count the enemies he kills on behalf of others. Realizing she never could have stopped Rihito becoming licked. Hina decides the only thing to do is to love him completely and strips naked, forcing Rihito to fondle her breasts as a memory to hold on to throughout the war, and swears she will be waiting for him in 300 years, time to marry him and carry his children so he will never be lonely again. The waste war had begun and Rihito, now known as Licht, found himself at the center of a violent maelstrom, his face obscured by a mask as he embarked on a relentless campaign, slaughtering thousands of enemy combatants. Four of his comrades from the academy, Sakai, Don, Sanahara, and Captain Allen, underwent the ace surgery, enhancing their abilities and joining Licht in the brutal conflict. As the war raged on, Schmelman, observing the world's descent into chaos, concluded that it was beyond salvation. Instead, he began formulating plans for a utopia he called Alcia. Over time, Lick's actions in the war took a toll on his psyche, eventually driving him to madness, and he committed a grievous act, severing Sanahara's left arm. Two long and grueling years later, the war finally drew to a close. Schmelman, having gathered all seven ballots, harnessed their power to create Alcia, a floating sanctuary high above the desolated planet's surface. He obliterated all means of communication with the world below and populated Alcia with individuals whose DNA represented a diverse array of races. To maintain control, Schmelman imposed a draconian system, banishing anyone whose ballot count reached zero to the abyss a portal leading to the ravaged surface. It was further revealed that Alcia's sustenance was reliant on Alting, 
a system that continually siphoned resources from the survivors on the planet's surface. Amid this turmoil, Sakai dared to steal one of the precious ballots, prompting Rahito to take his life at Schmelman's behest. This dramatic act pushed Rahito into a coma, and upon awakening, he learned the heart-wrenching truth. Every member of his class had chosen to remain on the planet's surface, opting for a tragic fate. For 300 long years, Licht donned his mask and withdrew into a self-imposed silence, even in the company of Nana, his only confidant, until the day he encountered Hina. Nana, upon Hina's return, expressed her concerns that Licht might have contemplated destroying Alcia to rescue the planet, an act that would jeopardize his own existence. She had always known that altering the past was an impossible endeavor, but she held on to the hope that they had gleaned valuable lessons to safeguard the future. Approaching Licht, Hina made a bold and intimate offer, symbolizing a return to the moment where their shared journey had begun 300 years earlier. Hina's spirits plummeted when Licht, who was over 300 years old, gently declined her advances, acutely aware of the significant age difference between them. In her despair, Hina sought solace in the embrace of alcohol and her intoxicated state led her to attempt to coerce Licht into an intimate encounter. This painful situation weighed heavily on Nana, who harbored her own feelings for Licht, and she struggled with her emotions in solitude. She couldn't help but notice that it was Hina who had brought happiness to Licht's life. Witnessing this complex web of emotions, Murdoch, never one to mince words, delivered a resounding punch to Licht chastising him for his foolishness. Murdoch then revealed the memory card given to him by the young Nana from the future, containing a series of videos that shed light on her long-standing affection for Licht. The clips chronicled Nana's decision to become Licht's wife and their 300 years together following the war, during which Licht had maintained his stoic silence and concealed his true self. As Licht watched the recordings, tears welled up in his eyes, and he offered a heartfelt apology. He confessed that he had been ashamed to remove his mask because he had lost the ability to smile genuinely, and he didn't want Nana to bear witness to a facade. The following day brought a more cheerful atmosphere as the group ventured to a nearby beach. Ina, growing irritated by Lick's frequent absences, took matters into her own hands and ensnared him in an animal trap. She demanded answers, questioning why he kept leaving her. In response, Licht disclosed a surprising revelation, he had known Hina's mother, Sukina Farrow. Licht's revelation sent shockwaves through the group as he unveiled the astonishing truth about Sukina Farrow. She had been his childhood friend, an anomaly who had somehow managed to survive 300 years without succumbing to the ACE surgery. Not only that, but she had stolen the 10,000 ballot from Schmelman five years ago, leaving him with only three remaining ballots. However, the bombshell didn't end there. Licht dropped another bombshell when he disclosed that Hina's father was none other than Licht's adopted brother, Tokike Sakai, whom Licht had tragically murdered. The weight of this revelation hung heavily in the air, casting a somber shadow over the group. Unable to contain their curiosity and unease, Ina, Nana, Lin, and Pele turned to Licht for answers. In response, Licht offered them wine, laced with a powerful drug that quickly overcame their senses. He explained that he was leaving to confront the army, a decision driven by his determination to protect those he cared about. As the drug began to take its toll on the group, causing them to lose consciousness one by one, Murdoch remained defiant, resisting its effects. He engaged in a heated conversation with Licht, vehemently condemning the pain he inflicted on his friends through his actions. Licht, however, remained resolute in his belief that it was better for him to bear the burden of killing, sparing others from such a grim fate. With his farewell words lingering in the air, Licht expressed his desire to be reunited with Hina and his hope of seeing her again before the end. The following morning, the group awoke to the realization of Lick's departure. Driven by their deep concern and love for him, they set out to chase after him. Meanwhile, Schmelman took action by dispatching another ace, Doan, whose power over gravity proved to be a formidable adversary. Pinned to the ground, Lick's thoughts were consumed by his yearning to see Hina once more as the gravity manipulation threatened to crush him. Amidst the chaos and uncertainty, Hina and her companion stumbled upon Licht, unconscious and vulnerable. However, their relief was short-lived, as they were soon captured by the Special Services Unit SSU, plunging them into a new ordeal. Meanwhile, Murdoch confronted the enigmatic figure known as Gregorovic, whom he had unveiled as Captain Allen. His demand for a star stake was not made lightly, but before engaging in the battle of numbers, Murdoch sought answers. He pressed Gregorovic to explain his betrayal of the world, unraveling the complex motivations behind his actions. Gregorovic, the ace of explosive strikes, bared his soul, recounting a heart-wrenching tale of personal tragedy. He had once been a father, with a son and daughter whose lives were cruelly cut short, 
murdered for the sustenance they carried. When Gregorovic tracked down the murderer, he found a desperate man who had committed the heinous act to feed his own starving child. In this moment of profound sorrow and compassion, Gregorovic chose to blame their deteriorating society instead of seeking vengeance. His transformation into a key figure in the creation of a new world order was fueled by this traumatic experience. Gregorovic saw an opportunity to build a better world, free from the shackles of their crumbling society. With Murdoch's defeat, his count was reduced to a mere one. However, Murdoch was not deterred by his loss. He challenged Gregorovic once more, reminding him that he had the power to change the past and save his own children. Gregorovic, resolute in his choices, refused this offer and officially discharged Murdoch from the military, allowing him to reunite with his friends. Meanwhile, Hina, Lin, and Pele found themselves imprisoned by Schmelman, their former teacher. Hina couldn't help but demand an explanation for his betrayal, and Schmelman finally unveiled the sinister purpose behind his actions. He had supported the non-killing army as a means to identify individuals with the potential to become aces through the ace surgery, seeking to harness their power. Schmelman's intentions became chillingly clear as he ordered Doan to perform the ace surgery on them and left them to their fate. However, Doan's refusal to allow anyone to become an ace who had not endured the horrors of the waste war led to a deadly confrontation within their ranks. As they made their escape, Hina inadvertently dropped the 10,000 and ballot, setting off a chain of events that would only deepen the turmoil. Fueled by anger and fear that they might plot to destroy Alcia, Doan set his sights on eliminating them, further intensifying the peril they faced. In the midst of danger and uncertainty, Lin managed to escape from her captor, Doan, though not without sustaining a grievous injury. As she fled on horseback, a gunshot rang out, piercing through her stomach and causing immense pain. Despite her dire condition, she summoned the strength to continue her escape. Ina, refusing to yield to despair, bravely stood up to Doan and expressed her unwavering faith in Lick's imminent rescue. She confronted Doan with her certainty that Lick would come to their aid, wagering their lives on her conviction. Doan reluctantly accepted the challenge, setting a fateful deadline for Lick's arrival. If Lick appeared by morning, he would spare their lives, including Nana's. However, if Licht failed to materialize, their fate would be sealed in death. Meanwhile, Lin, still wounded and in dire need of help, stumbled upon Licht. Despite her weakened state, she attempted to perform CPR on him, but exhaustion and blood loss overcame her, and she fell unconscious. It was only with the timely arrival of her friends from the village that she was rescued and provided with the care she so desperately required. Encouraged by her friends, Lin found the courage to confess her feelings to the unconscious Licht, knowing deep down that he didn't reciprocate her emotions. She urged him to save the woman he truly loved, Hina. In a poignant moment, Licht finally awoke from his unconscious state. Hina, steadfast in her love for him, confronted Licht about his feelings. He admitted that he had always loved her but harbored immense guilt over his role in the death of her father, a secret that had weighed heavily on his heart. As they shared their feelings and sealed their love with a kiss, Hina made a promise to stay by Licht's side and bear his children although they agreed to wait for the right time to start a family. Licht, now reunited with Hina and his companions, confronted Doan and expressed remorse for his attempt to destroy Alcia, the world they had fought to create together. However, before their reconciliation could solidify, a sudden and unexpected threat emerged. Sanahara, once again under the influence of her dark personality, appeared on the scene and fired a gunshot at Licht. Schmelman, watching from the shadows, pondered whether Licht possessed the strength to overcome the challenges posed by two of his former comrades, setting the stage for a perilous confrontation. In a tense and emotionally charged confrontation, Sanahara and Doan vent their pent-up anger and resentment towards Licht. Sanahara blames Licht for constantly rejecting her despite her relentless efforts to catch up to him. Doan holds Licht responsible for Sanahara's descent into madness and the deaths of their classmates who had fought and died for Licht's vision of the non-killing army. As the situation reaches a critical point, Licht teeters on the brink of activating his Schmelman personality, a dangerous and violent alter ego that could emerge with a single decision. However, at the eleventh hour, Murdoch intervenes to prevent Lick from succumbing to his dark side. Murdoch's count, reduced to one, limits his ability to summon iron, but he skillfully deflects all of Sanahara's shots and challenges the conviction behind her actions, shattering her psychological resolve and rendering her unable to hit her targets. In a moment of vulnerability, Sanahara breaks down in tears, revealing her inner turmoil. 
Licht, recognizing the inherent flaws in the concept of Alcia, announces his intention to start anew with a non-killing army. He and Doan engage in a brutal fistfight, revealing Licht's enduring inability to harm children, even in the midst of battle. Their enemies once sent child assassins to target Licht, a circumstance that forced Doan to take countless young lives to protect Licht. The two men stand at an impasse, with Doan determined to prevent Licht from igniting another war and Licht refusing to tolerate Alcia's continued exploitation of the weak. With no other apparent resolution, Solution in sight. Doan takes drastic action by creating a black hole, a destructive force capable of trapping even light itself. By utilizing the black hole's power, he aims to nullify Lick's lightning fast movements, ultimately leading to Lick being sucked into the void and disappearing from the scene. The fate of Lick hangs in the balance as he vanishes into the depths of the inescapable black hole. Lick awakens in the gravity well, and several masks of the aces criticize Lick's actions and advise him to give up and die. Licht realizes he was wrong to kill so his classmates wouldn't have to and decides to die. Ina shouts for Licht to come back and Licht remembers his promise. He destroys the masks and splits the gravity well, allowing him to escape and knock a disbelieving Doan unconscious. Doan recovers, returns Hina's ballot, then leaves. Lin awakens and accepts Licht rejected her. Murdoch reminds Nana he promised to play with her when he returned to the future. Pele confronts Licht in secret, demanding to know how Licht knew Pele could perform life-saving surgery on Lin. Licht reveals he has known for a long time Pele is secretly a member of the SSU, but decided he wasn't a threat due to his feelings for Lin. Lin's villager friends try to have Pele confess his feelings for Lin, but he instead returns to bickering with her over a meal. Lick decides to collect all seven ballots, not to destroy Alcia but to find a way for humanity to survive without alting. Schmelman begins planning to take over the capital city and several unseen figures suggest Lick's classmates are still alive. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel to see the continuation.